a bright sunny day. A mountainous area where there are almost no signs of life. Only occasionally green blades of grass are visible somewhere. A rabbit is sitting among such green blades of grass. He chews his treat, listening. The earth and sky are reflected in his eyes. Suddenly, his attention is attracted by something that is there in the sky. He raises his head up. A huge bird is hovering among the clouds, with two people on its back. The bird descends lower, preparing to land. White bird feathers fly around. One person looks down at the ground. Finally, the bird finds itself on a solid surface. It folds its wings, and two people jump off its back to the ground. This is the most remote place in the western region of the Hundred Thousand Mountains. The man asks Ken Ren if he even knows where they are. The younger boy immediately replies that, of course, he knows about it, and then proudly proclaims that he wants to stay here and build his own sect. The old man just stares speechlessly at the smug and determined Ken Ren. He tells Daddy that whoever becomes a core disciple of the Kengshuan sect has two choices. The first is to stay in the Kengshuan sect and become one of its elders in the future. The second is to get a golden seal, with which you can establish a sect alone. The old man added that he was very happy with the choice of the boy, and then wanted to add something else, but was interrupted by his student. The latter, accepting the wrapped object from the teacher's hands, said that he had already thought everything over carefully. He took into account several important points. Firstly, never to be an enemy of the Kingshuan sect. Secondly, the founder of the sect must necessarily preach and take into account the laws, as well as guide people to goodness and righteousness. Thirdly, if the sect collapses, it is necessary to immediately return the golden seal. The old man noticed that his teaching chose the region of the Hundred Thousand Mountains, the most remote in the entire western region. There is no one around, only wild animals and poisonous swamps everywhere, and there are almost no plants and trees here. Is this place exactly a good choice for founding a sect? Is Ken Ren sure about this? He hastened to reassure his teacher, asking him not to worry and convincing him that he knows what he is doing. The teacher hesitated a little more, pointing at the student with his finger, but eventually gave up, deciding not to dissuade the young man from his venture anymore. He explained that Ken Ren just needed to put her energy and a drop of blood into the golden seal, then let her create the sect herself. He also told him to remember one important point. Well, being is the most important thing in the sect. At this point, the teacher finished with the instructions, finally deciding to leave the student to continue to cope on his own. The bird on which both had flown rose up again. Now carrying only one with it, the teacher left the student, who was standing and looking up. Kin Ren breathed out a sigh of relief, waiting for the moment when his teacher would fly away. He believed that the old man did not need to explain to him what kind of place this was, because he knew everything perfectly well without it. However, the choice fell on this region because Ken Ren needed a place where he could practice on his own and improve his powers without the influence of the outside world. Now he glanced at the object that had been handed to him by the teacher. Is this the legendary heavenly boundary tablet that is used to create the golden seals of the spiritual treasure? He remembered that everyone who wants to establish a sect must have this tablet. Otherwise a great disaster will befall the sect. According to the book on the history of the Kingshuan sect, 500 years ago, there was an extraordinarily strong man who wanted to go against the heavens, and he forcibly opened the sect. Who would have thought that just six months after the opening of the sect, she experienced a catastrophe, the entire sect was wiped off the face of the earth, and her wealth was destroyed. It is also rumored that it was here, in the region of the Hundred Thousand Mountains, that man opened the sect by force, for this reason it is so dangerous here. Kin Ren fell silent, and then brought his finger to his teeth, biting until it bled. He dropped the droplets on the golden seal, lowering it to the ground. Some kind of energy began to form around him. Ken Ren folded his hands in a greeting gesture and introduced himself. He is the younger Ken Ren. He is here to found a sect, and it will be called the Hyoxi sect. The golden seal rose higher and higher. It glowed and glittered. The task assigned to it was clear, Hyoxi, to found a sect. In the ice palace, which was located in the middle of a mountainous area, a girl was sitting at a table by the window. A bright glow in the sky caught her attention. She suddenly remembered the past. She was sitting by a tree, and the young man standing next to her addressed her, you, and promised that one day he would become a core disciple of the Kingshuan sect, become one of the masters, and then create his own sect. He said that he was thinking about the sect he would create in the future and wanted to call it the Hyaxi sect. Now the girl, who was thinking about it, realized that Ken Ren had managed to do what he wanted, create his own sect. Meanwhile, the Golden Seal was working hard to create a sect. Ken Ren watched, wondering, is this the voice of heaven? Bright glowing stars were flying around him. A golden seal, on the base of which was written, Golden Seal, Spiritual Treasure, hovered in the air. This year, Kin Ren wanted to touch the sky and reach for the stars themselves. He stared at the seal in surprise. Does heaven know everything about him? Kin Ren is not from this world. He came to this world from Earth. When he first woke up in this world, he was already a disciple of the Kingshuan sect. 
After learning about the dangers and wonders of this world, he made a well-thought-out plan and eventually spent all his strength and time training. Now, finally, he was able to become a core disciple of the Kengshuan sect and had the opportunity to develop on his own. He never told anyone about it, but the Golden Seal was able to find out from somewhere. The voice that reached Kin Ren was saying that his blood did not belong to this world. The boy thought that this voice was in his head. He did not expect that the Golden Seal would find out that he was from another world, so he did not know what to do now and assumed that a catastrophe would happen now. But the voice continued to speak, since the Huaxi sect master is from another world. The Huaxi sect can recruit disciples from the sect master's world. These words caused Ken Ren to be surprised. It also became known from the seal that all students from another world can create their own bodies. And after death, the souls of such students will be enclosed in a golden seal, and they can be resurrected after recreating the body. The voice asked if Ken Ren needed the seal's help with this. Ken Ren did not understand what the seal meant. Even after she found out that he was from another world, nothing happened. It turns out that he will be able to summon people to this world from his own world, as well as resurrect them. Ken Ren thought about it. If you can create your own body, die and rise again. In that case, he should make something like an online game out of the sect. And since the world he came from is Earth, the called students will definitely know about online games. He smiled at his own idea. It seemed wonderful. Ken Ren turned to the Golden Seal, asking for help to summon the disciples. He stated that he wants 100 beautiful students with big breasts. There was silence. Ken Ren looked at the seal, and then indignantly asked why she frowned. A voice answered him, the Golden Seal can only recruit players, but not select them. Ken Ren looked at the interlocutor suspiciously, and then asked what he had just said. He stammered that he had heard everything. Ken Ren asked again, the seal just said players, right? He screamed that he immediately thought that the seal was strange, like this voice. And now she also knows about the players. The voice, having hardened, explained that the Heavenly Tao is omniscient. Ken Ren still thought that there was something wrong with this seal. He assumed that it was also a person from another world like himself. It was just that this person was stronger. After that, he decided that it didn't matter. He just needed to follow his plan. The guy turned to the seal again, calling it the heavenly way. The seal immediately corrected him, saying that she was a golden seal, not a heavenly path. Ken Ren was looking at the seal, which was too annoying. The young man turned to the press again asking for help to create an online game site on Earth, and then the press should go to Earth and recruit a hundred nerds of online games. He repeated, asking if everything was clear. Printing should pretend to be an online game in order to recruit students. The seal confirmed all that was said. A new place of conscription was opened, and the method of conscription was also established. Ken Ren was pleased, saying that, in his opinion, everything should work out for the seal. He himself was thinking that he would become like an NPC in the game create an invincible army that could be resurrected endlessly. And if he also enters into an unequal agreement with them, he will be able to manage their lives at his discretion. With this agreement, it will be possible to forget about possible betrayal. He chuckled, believing that with gamers, his sect would definitely become the strongest on this continent. His face was beaming, his lips were smiling, and he was determined. Earth 2031, a residential building with several apartments. In one of them there is a table with a lot of things on it. Some guy is looking at some object, admiring it and saying that it is amazing. These words were directed at the VR helmet. The guy had already forgotten his existence. Now, this man decided to play a little bit. He even had a couple of ideas. He put the helmet on his head, pressed the blue button that was located in the forehead area. Now he will kill everyone in the form of a Gundam. A yellow piece of paper landed smoothly on the table. The guy took off his helmet and looked at this piece of paper questioningly. It was an entrance exam ticket and it was written in small print at the bottom, 100% virtual reality with incredible graphics, 100 people who pass the exam will get there for free. The guy who received this exam ticket, a table in the middle of his room with this sheet in his hands, repeating what was written, a free VR game with 100 seats to pass the test. He immediately sat down at the computer, saying that he was interested in it. Now he wanted to know the details. He typed the following into the browser's search bar, fantasy VR game about cultivators. When he saw the search results, he was speechless for a second. What he saw disappointed him, he was outraged, saying that even his grandmother would have done better. He decided that this game was probably some kind of game, otherwise it wouldn't have been given away for free. He flopped into bed, taking off his slippers as he went, deciding to go to sleep rather than waste time. Later, he raised his head, turning back to the computer. Now he decided that maybe it wasn't a hoax at all. He doesn't spend a dime anyway, why not give it a try? Now he was lying on the bed with a helmet on. Worrying about how uncomfortable this helmet was, he went into the game and was immediately surprised. It seemed to him that it was very good, and the textures were very realistic. 
The voice in the game welcomed the first beta player, informing that the game will use the appearance of a player from the real world. Players will also be able to search for clothes based on their appearance and parameters, and the default pain level is set to 5%. After completing the character setup, you can log into the game, but before that you had to confirm your nickname. On the screen in front of him, you could select the parameters of the character. The guy looked thoughtfully at the screen that appeared next to him and said that he had such an appearance, which would not be particularly affected by weight loss. He shifted the slider towards appearance, explaining that in any case he would be able to lose weight, but he would not be able to make a beautiful appearance by training alone. A voice in the game said that the confirmation and installation of the character's appearance was taking place. The guy looked at himself and the result impressed him. It seemed to him that now he really looks much more beautiful. The nickname he chose was not occupied by someone, so the system asked if he really wanted to use Demon Flutist as a nickname. Smiling, the player enthusiastically confirmed the nickname. The action is transferred to the hall of the Huexi sect. Ken Ren was standing on the steps, and something began to form behind him. He turned around, addressing the player who had just arrived. The Demon Flutist who appeared in the sect's territory stood with his mouth wide open. He looked around and concluded that this game was simply amazing and looked no worse than reality and the pain level of 5% felt like a mosquito bite. Over time, more and more people began to appear on the territory of the Huaxi sect. Everyone was surprised at how realistic everything seemed here. Someone said that they seemed to be an isekai. One man noticed that this hall was very old and looked more like ruins, and later people noticed Ken Ren, mistaking him for an NPC. He smiled, because that's what he expected. The young man turned to the players, greeting them as disciples of the Huaxi sect. He also introduced himself, Ken Ren, master of the Huaxi sect. The crowd praised his appearance, saying that he looked like some kind of actor. Ken Ren asked everyone to look at the agreement. The players had an agreement, and they had questions about it. They used to agree to this in front of their monitors, but now what? Shouldn't they agree to the rules when they first enter the game? The agreement specified the following points. All player income should be transferred to the sect. If they receive any rewards, they should not hide them. Otherwise punishment will follow. You cannot betray the sect. You cannot do anything that can harm it. You cannot insult the sect master. You cannot speak ill of the sect master either. You cannot to use and spy on the bathroom of the sect master. Otherwise everyone will be punished. One man said that this agreement was more like a slave contract. The message from the system stated that in order to start the game, you need to confirm the user's agreement on the rules of the game. Kin Ren watched and thought that it had finally started. He thought that this was just the beginning, and he was confident that what awaits these players in the future is worth this agreement. However, he thought that the players might not agree if they started reading the agreement in full. The crowd started talking again. Someone advised not to read into the agreement, because everyone will eventually agree anyway, because they will not be able to play without consent. Others agreed with this, and besides, they did not want to read this agreement, it would take too much time. Everyone immediately agreed. Someone remarked that this was to be expected from Brother Tong. Ken Rin looked at Brother Tong, saying that this guy clearly knows how to convince people. The young man thought that now he was one step closer to his goal. At first, he chose this place because he didn't want to reveal that he was also from Earth. However, he did not expect that he would be able to recruit 100 students who, moreover, could not die. Heaven itself is on his side. Now he was going to force these students to do something. It remained to decide what it would be. Remembering the hall, Kin Ren decided that the first thing to do was to restore it, because free labor should not be wasted. The head of the sect turned to the disciples, preparing to announce his decision. The players listened impatiently to what he would say. What he had decided, someone hoped that now, finally, they would have a fight with monsters. One person in the crowd said that usually the first task in such games is to kill a chicken, and the second hoped that in this game they would not just kill a chicken. Ken Ren looked at his students speechlessly as they talked incessantly about killing monsters, each expressing their own ideas and so on. The head's face frowned. He thought that even if they were all his students, there were still too many of them. Even though they accepted the agreement that they could not betray him, he allowed them to leave at any moment. In addition, they can also opt out of the game. They shouldn't waste their time if they don't want to play. Ken Ren coughed, urging his students to be silent as it was too noisy. He repeated what he had said before, about the decision he had made. He told the students to come down from the mountain and explore this world better. The players were inspired. They liked the opportunity to start new adventures, they were ready to go exploring the territory. The players turned to Brother Ren, calling him to go on a trip rather. The same, in turn, considered them a bunch of idiots. However, the main thing for him was one thing. He needed to convince them to study in his sect, because they could leave at any moment, since they had no connection with this world. Along the way, the players began to have questions. How long have they been walking? How long will this task take them? Someone replied that they had already gone through a lot, but this game is very cool. Someone was already barely walking. 
and there were many of them because they had been walking like this for an hour and a half. Ken Ren commented on their conversations to himself, what did they think? This is not a walk. They were almost there now. Suddenly, Ken Ren stopped. He addressed the Taoist cultivators, saying that they should not be afraid of difficulties. They should train at every opportunity to strive for the Tao. He pointed his finger somewhere to the side, saying that he was the first test. A huge sleeping animal lay in front of the players. The crowd started talking again. The students said that the model of the monster was just perfect. It even breathed super realistically. This monster is called Shuang Huao. It is found at the foot of Mount Zongmin. Besides it there are also many other monsters. As long as all these monsters are here, it will be difficult for the sect to extract nearby natural resources. So, killing these monsters is the first test for the players. Ken Ren announced that the students needed to kill 100 Shuang Huao in three days. The students' faces were tense. They seemed agitated. The head of the sect added that if the disciples fail, then they will carefully listen to his advances and cultivate conscientiously, but in such a way as not to overdo it. Now he was thinking that, although most of the resources here are occupied by monsters, there are also those that are completely free. However, as long as the players wanted to fight, Ken Ren wanted to use them as manpower. It's brilliant. Someone began to lift the tree, leaving only a stump of it. It was the demon flutist who had thrown the object he had grabbed onto his shoulder and was now rushing towards where Ken Ren was standing. The guy ran past the teacher, and he just looked questioningly while the demon flutist, jumping into the air, wished death to his enemy. When he got close, he swung his weapon, hit the monster hard. The other players looked on with excitement. The tree had cracked from the impact, and now that the whole picture was visible, one could see how negligibly small the demon flutist was compared to the monsters he attacked. There were whispers in the crowd that Brother Tong was in too much of a hurry. He even broke down a tree. His attempt to defeat the monster was unsuccessful. Now he was lying next to the monster. Kin Ren touched his forehead with his hand, thinking about what a fool this Brother Tong was. Didn't the Golden Seal recruit nerds to the sect for him? Brother Tong, in Kin Ren's opinion, was more like a noob. A bump appeared on the monster's head from a blow from a tree. He woke up and got to his feet. A demon flutist was crawling in front of him on his knees. The monster was getting closer to the offender. Other players just watched this. One thought Brother Tong's pose was funny, because that's how they get up and pray for the new year. The other said that he did not think that the beast would attack. The demon flutist opened one eye, then raised his head, looking up questioningly. The monster began to stomp. Even the ground shook. It was like an earthquake. The players did not understand what was happening. The demon lifted the leg under which the body of Tong's crushed brother lay. His soul left its container, looking at what was happening in surprise. The monster was breathing heavily, and then pressed his head to the ground, where his prey was. The students realized that the monster had killed Tong's brother, and he did it in a split second. Someone began to doubt that these are really monsters for beginners, because they look more like bosses. Ken Ren began to speak. The students, in his opinion, probably thought that it was difficult or even impossible to kill this monster. However, the head of the sect reported that Shuang Huao is the weakest monster within a 15 kilometers radius. But the students began to chatter in response, believing that Ken Ren must be joking if he calls this monster the weakest. Now this game seemed very difficult to them. But the cultivator assumed that this was how his disciples would react. Then he decided that he needed to show the students how their master himself would deal with Shuang Huao. Ken Ren resolutely walked towards the monster. When he got closer, it looked at him. At the same moment, the monster's eyes widened and sparkled. He stood up and, making a loud sound, opened his mouth, from which drool flew. Even the cultivator's clothes were fluttering due to the rising wind. The monster fell silent, but still stared fiercely at the cultivator who stood in front of him. Shuang Hua struck, crumbling the ground beneath him. Stones jumped into the air and flew apart. With this, he did not cause any harm to Ken Ren, because he deftly jumped right onto the monster's back. Now he was moving over the monster, and his leg was shrouded in a green haze. He kicked off the beast's body with his foot and immediately found himself on the ground behind the opponent's back. He turned around, glaring at the cultivator. He delivered a crushing blow again, but Kin Ren jumped into the air and was not injured. He held out his hand, which gradually began to form something. A green circle with sparks formed in his hand, from which the Kai, Kin Chuan sword soon appeared. The green blade of the sword was reflected in the monster's eye. Ken Ren, being on his back, slashed his entire huge body with his sword, blood gushed out. Ken Ren, surrounded by the green glow and blood of the enemy, stood with his arm outstretched. The monster collapsed to the ground, and the dust around it rose into the air due to such a fall. Ken Ren, who was already on the ground, was still standing with a sword in his hands. After that, the sword began to disappear. The students opened their mouths and looked at the master, who had dealt with the monster so quickly that he had previously seemed incredibly strong to them. Now they started shouting Ken Ren's name, praising him and his cool sword, it seemed incredible to them. 
Ken Ren turned to the disciples of the Huaxi sect, asking if they remembered everything. There was an uproar among the students. Does Brother Ren really want to teach them this? Will they become as beautiful as he is? The students now wanted to follow their brother and study hard. Ken Ren was pleased with the result of his work. The first stage was completed. The disciple who had died earlier began to appear in the hall of the Huaxi sect. Brother Tong had returned and didn't understand what was going on yet. After that, he was bursting with indignation. It's crazy, how can a monster at the start kill a player in a few seconds? He intended to leave and wanted to take the others with him. But he quickly discovered that he was alone here. There was no one else around. It quickly dawned on him that he was the only one who had died. And everyone else was still at the foot of the mountain. No one else died except him. He complained that now he would have to go down and look for other players. But this time he wanted to explore the map around. The demon flutist found himself next to the warehouse of techniques. He looked at it thinking that maybe he could learn some technique. He decided that this was a legendary opportunity, and he himself was probably the chosen one. Brother Tong entered the building, looking around in surprise. It was dark here, with only light coming in from the open doors. Looking at the pile of books and debris that were lying on the floor, the player concluded that it was very dirty here. It upset him. He knelt down, his gaze fell on the blue book. The player took this item in his hands, enthusiastically brushing the dust off it. He expected to see something else, but his eyes narrowed when he looked at the name. He decided that it was some kind of super powerful technique with which he could take over this world. However, it was just a technique for movement. Indeed, the book in his hand was about the technique of rapid movement. Upset by such a find, the demon flutist threw the book on the floor, calling it garbage and saying that even a dog would not teach such a thing. He walked away with quick steps, leaving the book he had found lying on the floor. The warehouse was empty, the doors were still open. Very quickly, the demon flutist changed his mind, returning inside and grabbing the blue book again. Now he looked at her doubtfully, noting that even for free he would not have learned this technique. In the next scene, a demon flute player was walking along a path between trees with a book in his hands. He opened the book, deciding that he could take a look at its contents once. Suddenly, someone's voice was heard behind him. The man turned to Tong and asked what he was holding. The frightened player began to hide the find. He decided that no one should find out about it. Tong turned around and saw Ken Ren, an NPC, standing next to him and smiling. The student saw Master Ren and excitedly put the book in front of him, showing it to the teacher and saying that he wanted to try to learn this technique. At this time, he was thinking that he should not hide something from the master, otherwise he could be excluded from the test at any moment. Ken Ren saw the book and stretched out his hand. The book instantly flew from the hands of the student into the hands of the master. The master read the title, The Technique of Quick Step. He returned the book to the student and turned around, preparing to leave, after which he said that this is the most common technique in the world of cultivation, and it has no special value. However, for novice cultivators it is an excellent option, so it can be used for practice. The master also added that the demon flutist can practice in the Gong Fa Hall, sit cross-legged and meditate, providing the secret kingdom of Gong Fa. He waved his hand as if saying goodbye to the student. The student stared at the back of the man, who added that the master could only help pave the way, and the result depended on the student himself. Ken Ren turned his head. Looking at the player, his last words were that the student needs to work hard, because the result depends only on him. In the hall, Gong Fa Tong was sitting on the floor with an open book. He was not surprised that he did not understand anything. It turns out that he needed to meditate. He closed his eyes, adjusting himself and trying to concentrate. Suddenly, a blue glow began to appear above his head. Soon, he was standing, and there were silhouettes around him showing movement techniques. The student realized that this is the technique of a quick step. In the next scene, blood is pouring onto the ground. It drips from the hand of a man who is breathing heavily. This guy seems to be seriously injured. His clothes are torn in the area, wounds not only on his shoulder, but also on his head. This disciple had come together in battle with Shuang Huao, who is now rushing straight towards the wounded man. The monster hit the ground in the place where this young man was standing, but he managed to jump aside in time, thereby saving his life. The kid thought he still had a chance, and the monster glared at him with glittering eyes. After a couple of seconds, this kid was already lying on the ground. His dying words were that he was unlucky. Everything would have been different if he had been a little faster. The players were watching this guy from the sidelines. It was Shan Wang, who tried again and again to defeat the monster immediately after resurrection. This time, he failed again. This game seemed very difficult to the players. Those who have already fought this monster have come to the conclusion that at this speed it is simply impossible to defeat it. Someone said that it is, and whoever can defeat this beast will definitely become a hero. It was Brother Tong who appeared at the foot of the mountain who resolutely said that the title of hero was quite suitable for him. It was already clear to everyone that speed was the key to victory, and it was worth thanking Shan Wang for such a hint. Brother Tong was heading towards the monster. 
and the players were asking if he knew how to defeat Shuang Huao. The demon flutist only replied that he should receive the title of hero in addition to his title of died first. He admitted to the players that he had learned a technique that could increase his speed, preparing for the start. Tong confidently said that he would be the first to kill the monster in this game. The monster stood motionless. Tong rushed at him at breakneck speed. Shuang Huao's eyes widened in surprise. According to observers, it looked promising. They decided that Shuang Huao was scared and wished their comrade good luck, hoping that he would kill the beast. But Brother Tong did not succeed. The monster hit him with his nose. He flew high into the air. The players just stared at this failure, contorting their faces with discontent. The demon flutist died again. He went berserk, shouting that he was tired of this shit game. After that, he noticed Shan Wang who had also died earlier, and asked him if he was tired of dying and why he was in such a hurry to meet his death. Chan Wang, without turning around, began to tell a story. One day, climber George Mallory was asked by journalists why he needed to climb Mount Everest. Chan Wang asked Tong if he knew what the climber had said, but immediately gave the answer, because it exists. According to George, life should be full of challenges. So now that Chan Wang has a task ahead of him, he feels he has to complete it. It was a challenge for him. After all that was said, he decided to hit the road. Tong, who was pulling his hand towards his friend, asked him to wait. He hesitantly said that for Shan Wang's tenacity, he would make an exception and teach him an important skill. Meanwhile, the other disciples at the foot of the mountain were discussing Brother Tong's failure. Even though he became faster, he was still killed in a matter of seconds. Someone said that he was simply not destined to fight. All his attempts were in vain. One of the students told the guys that they needed to change their strategy. The students heard the sentence and began to turn towards the person who was saying it. That young man was Xin Hua. He was a legendary strategist in various MMORPG games. His guild occupied countless of the first monster kills in the dungeons. The players couldn't believe that this man was really Xin Hua. Everyone thought that someone had just taken his nickname. Now, there was growing confidence among the players that with the help of Xin Hua, they would be able to defeat Shuang Hua. Xin Hua spoke again. He asked if anyone had said that they should fight without weapons. He offered to make a battle formation and put himself forward as a leader and now he was asking how this idea was for other players. Meanwhile, the other two players were coming down the stairs. Tong was thinking that this guy, Shan Wang, had learned the fast step technique in just 20 minutes, although it took Tong himself an hour to do the same. Now Shan Wang had become even stronger. The flute demon wanted to see how Shan Wang would kill Shuang Huao. The two finally arrived at the foot of the mountain, where the monster lived. Here, one person was in charge of all the others. He was telling the rock shield group to hold back Shuang Huao's attack. The spearman group was ordered to attack from the side and from behind, and the rest were to continue to look for an opportunity to attack with everyone and inflict maximum damage. Xin Hua has been doing a great job of commanding the players so far. The group with shields tried their best to hold back the monster. The spearmen attacked from the other side, doing everything as they were told. Xin Hua told those who already had broken equipment to immediately run to him for a new one, since there was no time to waste in the fight against Shuang Huao. The battle was in full swing. Shan Wang watched from the sidelines, saying that the guys would not be able to continue at the same pace, in his opinion, even if there are a lot of people. But the average strength is low, in any case, the players will lose. Tong listened attentively to his friend. The monster was fighting back against the attackers. Xin Hua told the rock shield group to keep holding on, while the rest had to attack again and again. He himself thought that their position was unenviable, because the spearmen simply did not have time to attack. One student told Xin Hua that there were less than a third of them left, and another reported that they only had one spear left, and the rest seemed to still have equipment left. Xin Hua commanded again, this time telling everyone remaining to head towards him and prepare for the final attack. In front of everyone, he rushed at the enemy with a spear, shouting for everyone else to attack too. The monster was looking at a bunch of people, breathing heavily. He got up on his hind legs, intending to trample everyone in his path. Xin Hua, standing right next to the danger, seemed very worried. He looked up at the beast calling above him. Shan Wang concluded, this is definitely the end. He and Tong were still watching from the sidelines for everything that was happening here. The monster struck a crushing blow. After the blow inflicted by the monster, only lifeless bodies remained from a bunch of people lying on the ground. All the players died. Brother Tong, now lying on the ground, said with chagrin that their entire formation had been destroyed, and also added that if he had not been so far away, he would have been able to deliver the final blow. This boss seemed invincible to him. In front of Tong's face were only the legs of Shan Wang, who was standing next to a comrade who had paid on the ground. He turned to Tong, deciding to reveal the truth to him. As long as this is a game, there is no invincible boss that cannot be defeated. And while Shan Wang is playing, he feels the need to win this battle. Because this monster boss just exists. 
The players who had fallen on the battlefield began to appear in the hall of the Hyuxi sect. Ken Ren was standing there as well. Xin Hyo began to doubt himself, already starting to think that his legendary nickname was just a joke. Even though so many people have teamed up against one monster, they still haven't managed to defeat it. Even with the number one leader, they still lost this fight. Someone started clapping. Ken Ren addressed the disciples of his sect, saying that now they know how cruel this world is. The master stood in front of the players and continued to speak, saying that even with the cultivation of the peak of the Kai Purification Sphere, it still takes a lot of strength and effort to defeat Shuang Huao. Of course, it is impossible to cope with this at the initial stage of body hardening. He gave the reason why he gave his students this assignment. It was so that they would understand the truth. Cultivation is not easy. The master said that from now on they should follow his instructions, do what he tells them to do. Suddenly, an alert came from the system. The progress of the Kill Shuang Huao quest has increased. One monster out of a hundred was exposed by someone. This caused even Ken Ren to be surprised. Not to mention the other players who couldn't believe that there was someone who could defeat this beast. One of the students turned to Ren, suggesting that there must be something wrong with the system. The master thought about it. In his mind, he turned to the Heavenly Tao to find out from him what had happened. The answer came immediately. Everything is as it was said in the notification, someone was able to defeat Shuang Huao. The voice also added that he was not a heavenly Tao, but a golden seal of discovery. Then there was grumbling again, because the seals would get tired of it if Kin Ren asked something all the time. That's why the golden seal decided to give Ren permission so that he could immediately see the specific situation with the quest. Questions followed from Kin Ren again. Did someone really defeat Shuang Huao? Who is he and how did he do it? The golden seal was only indignant, because it seemed to her that Kin Ren was not listening to her at all. To the students, this state of affairs seemed impossible. Xin Hua was sure that it was Shan Wang. Only he could defeat this monster. It seemed quite real to the others. Shan Wang could really defeat the monster, but how did he do it? Is he a cheater? Besides, he wasn't here right now, which meant he wasn't dead. It was still hard to believe. Kin Ren's original plan was to break the spirit of the disciples with this impossible task, then force them to move on to the next stage, to cut down the forest and extract stone, rebuild the sect. However, now his plans have changed. Ken Ren asked the disciple who was talking about Shan Wang to take him to this man. Tong stood next to the defeated monster, asking if it was really dead. The other students arrived at their destination, immediately seeing Tong and Shan Wang here. Shuang Huao's corpse also did not go unnoticed. Shan Wang himself was sitting on it, and Tong was standing next to him on the ground. Tong was cheerful, and Shan Wang was smiling smugly, watching the reaction of his comrades. Xin Hua became convinced that this was indeed the person he was talking about. Ken Ren asked the student if he had defeated Shuang Huao himself. The disciple jumped off the corpse, landing next to the master, and said that it was true, he had defeated the beast himself, although it was quite difficult. Ken Ren thought that this was a player who was undoubtedly still in the Kai purification stage. It really seemed unusual to defeat Shuang Huao with a force that is only at this stage of Kai purification. Ken Ren asked the student if he could defeat another monster to show the others how he did it. The student looked resolutely at the teacher and promised to try to do it. Everyone, including Kin Ren, watched from afar as Shan Wang approached the sleeping monster. He stopped. There was a stone near his foot, which was immediately picked up. With a stone in his hand, the student looked at the monster, saying that this area was flat and open, it was perfect. He threw a stone, hitting Shuang Hua right in the head. The monster immediately woke up and began to rise. Shan Wang's actions seemed ridiculous to someone, since he used the stone to fight the enemy. Xin Hua watched carefully and asked that commentator to be silent. Meanwhile, the beast was rushing at whoever dared to disturb it, and Shan Wang was watching and waiting. When the monster was very close, the student dodged its attack. Only stones flew in all directions. Xin Hua was intently following Shan Wang's movements. Shan Wang did not let up. The monster did not want to retreat either. The student's actions seemed unusual. Despite the fact that it is difficult to dodge such direct attacks, this minimizes damage. The monster struck again, dust rose around and the ground shook. Shan Wang, being on the side, struck Shuang Huo's muzzle. It's really like cutting on the edge of a knife. Kin Ren understood everything. This is a fighting style based on the technique of rapid stride. During a monster attack, you can maintain your stamina by using only precise dodges. It's just that Shan Wang not only uses quick step to increase his movement speed, but also increases the strike distance, thereby strengthening his attack. That is why even low-level learning techniques can be very useful. Shan Wang was very fast. He moved so that he was almost invisible. Shuang Huao did not have time to touch him. Shan Wang did not receive a single blow during the battle, while Shuang Huao himself had already received several blows. The students had no doubts now. Shan Wang could definitely kill this monster. Everyone was sure of it. The student was standing in front of the monster, and the monster was looking at him. 
Shuang Hua was preparing to attack, and Shan Wang knew that he had to be prepared because the enemy would use a large-scale attack. Ken Ren watched calmly, surprise reflected on the faces of the other students. Glaring at his opponent, Shuang Hua struck, but the disciple jumped up, again not even allowing himself to be hurt. This tactic of his amazed observers. Shan Wang used the hatchet, striking a decisive blow directly at the monster's head from above. Shuang Hua fell down, his eyes rolled back in his head. The notification from the system came again. The progress of the quest kills Shuang Hua, two out of one hundred. After his victory, the student carefully lowered himself to the ground, smiling and crossing his arms over his chest. Kin Rin said that it was not bad. After winking at everyone gathered, Shan Wang asked if they had learned what they had been shown. Kin Ren was almost indignant. How dare the student imitate him? The crowd shouted the winner's name, called him Superman and said it was damn great. The crowd surrounded their hero. Someone remembered him. This is Shan Wang. He is also the king of the mountains. The abbreviation is Calm. A calm that has set countless speedrun records for super complex games. There were even his fans here. They didn't expect him to play online games too. Ken Ren watched from the sidelines, concluding that Shan Wang seemed to have a very good reputation. Suddenly, something else caught the master's attention. One of the students, who was behind the master, turned to him, deciding to tell him something. Someone was standing near the body of the defeated monster, but most of the students crowded around the hero of the day. Ken Ren coughed to get everyone's attention and say something. He succeeded, and the students looked towards the master. Shan Wang listened respectfully to the master. He thought about it, and then announced that Shan Wang not only committed the first murder, but also conducted a demonstration milking other students. He really did a great job, so after completing the mission, he will receive an additional bonus, as well as an additional bonus for the one who commits the most murders. The disciple thanked the master, and he said that he hoped that Shan Wang would be able to help other disciples of the sect learn how to fight. Shan Wang asked the master not to worry about this. The master turned around, preparing to leave and thinking that all they needed was a positive attitude. Finally, he said that he would look forward to success from his students. After the master left, the disciples crowded around Shan Wang again. Now they asked to be taught how to fight. Someone was going to throw the video to everyone after returning, hoping that they would bookmark it and put a tenor. Some of the students were walking away, and Shan Wang he addressed them through the crowd surrounding them, saying that the master had asked him to teach everyone martial techniques. Did they really not want to try? The student from 82 Fu said that battles were not for him and that the master had assigned them another task. Shan Wang looked after them in frustration, wanted to object something, but another student told Shan Wang to leave him because there really would be a better case for him, so do not try to convince him. Shan Wang had no choice, he immediately agreed. Sunny, clear weather, birds are sitting on the roof of the building. Tong was outside the main hall of the Kingshuan sect and was cursing. He was upset because he was the first to discover the quick step technique. But in the end, Shan Wang coped with the task, and Tong can't learn his fighting style in any way. Tong was also confident that this amazing cultivation game would be a hit in the future, so if he couldn't close the gap now, all the bonuses would be snapped up. Suddenly, Tong began to look around, having discovered something. This was what he was looking for. Meanwhile, at the foot of the mountain, Shan Wang stood in front of another monster, while the other students were training at a fast pace. He was going to kill another two-horned beast. Shan Wang called the enemy to him, saying that he already knew all his movements by heart. Suddenly, an alert came that another monster had been destroyed. This caused Shan Wang to be surprised. He was distracted. Shuang Hua was already rushing towards him at full speed. The student did not have time to react and met with a powerful attack from the monster, which instantly threw him into the air. Shan Wang died and appeared in the sect hall, annoyed that he had lost so stupidly, distracted by the notification. Brother Tong was also standing in the same hall. He seemed pleased and hummed a tune. Shan Wang realized that it was Tong's brother who committed the murder, so he decided that he had found some other new technique. The other students were discussing the new alert. They were wondering who had committed another murder. The answer seemed obvious, it was Shan Wang. Meanwhile, Shan Wang was rushing to the place where the monsters live. He decided that he needed to act quickly, since Tong had probably found some new technique. The notification came again. Another murder. Shan Wang was shocked again, because he had not even managed to descend the steps yet. Brother Tong appeared from behind, looking pleased and smiling all over his face. Shan Wang couldn't figure out how Tong had committed murder again. The student did not want to screw up. He believed that he simply had to kill the next beast right now. However, he was outpaced again. An alert has arrived about the fifth monster killed. How is this even possible? Right now, Shan Wang was fighting the monster with all his might, dodging its attacks and thinking that the two-horned beast was not so easy to deal with. A few students stood away from the hype and practiced. 
One of them said that they were almost done with the quick step, so they could try to kill the two-horned beast. Another suggested looking at Shan Wang again first. The alert came again. Six out of one hundred animals were killed. The student was amazed at how quickly Shan Wang copes with killing monsters. However, it came to mind that they had all already seen how Shan Wang copes with enemies. It takes him a long time. Now, in such a short period of time, someone has already committed as many as four monsters. Someone suggested that other masters had appeared. At that moment, the students noticed Brother Tong walking along, looking around. They wondered what this guy was doing secretly. It was suspicious. The students decided that something was definitely wrong here. They all decided to follow Tong unnoticed to find out what he was doing. The bushes rustled. Tong was making his way through them. He found another two-horned beast and was now chuckling contentedly. From the same bushes, Tong was being watched. Five pairs of eyes stared at him, deciding that Brother Tong was going to fight the monster again. Tong rushed at the beast, who was asleep, and then abruptly opened its eyes, opening its mouth wide. Tong, as if expecting this, jumped right into the monster's mouth. It closed its mouth, and a loud sound rang out. The guys watching from the bushes did not understand what kind of noise it was. Blood flowed from Shuang Huao's mouth, after which he collapsed. The alert came again. Seven monsters out of one hundred were killed. The heads of the students appeared from behind the bushes, looking questioningly at everything that had happened. It was now obvious that Brother Tong was carrying out these murders, but how did he manage it? They didn't understand anything at all, so it was decided to calm down, behave quietly, wait and see again how Tong would kill the monster. Another alert. Eight monsters out of one hundred have been killed. And again, the students did not understand anything. The monster just ate Brother Tong and died. Did Brother Tong do something? One of the guys was thoughtfully adjusting his glasses. He came out of the bushes, declaring that he understood everything, that he had solved this riddle. Another yelled at him, saying he might be noticed. But the guy didn't care. He moved further away from the bushes while the other students asked him to come back, because there was a two-horned beast. The guy with glasses started saying that they had actually all missed one important detail. They always had the best weapon against the two-horned beast. He thought he understood the truth and came very close to the enemy. But that, he seriously informed that human flesh is poison for these monsters. Other students wondered if this could be true. Meanwhile, the guy with glasses fell straight into Shuang Huao's mouth, and he began to chew him. The students watched with excitement. Will it really work? Is it really as this kid said? But nothing happened. The monster just chewed his lunch, followed by only a belch. The students frowned, silently watching. The eaten boy is resurrected. He did not see any notification of the murder and realized that his conclusion was incorrect. However, it was not so important to him because he still had a plan B. He decided to wait. Meanwhile, the ninth murder had already occurred. After that, Brother Tong appeared in the hall of the Huaxi sect, where a guy with glasses was waiting for him. It was Zheng Dan. He was hiding behind a pillar and was about to reveal the secret of Tong defeating the two-horned beast. Tong looked around, then began to sneak into the building. Zheng Dan, who had been following him all this time, was watching from the bushes and began to understand what was happening. This was the Kingchuan Sex Alchemy Hall. Going inside, Tong took a ball, laughed contentedly, hit it, and then left. However, Zheng Dan had already figured out his secret. The birdsong was interrupted only by the exclamations of the students, to whom Zheng Dan told about the Tong method. He told me about the pill. One of the students was looking at this small object, saying that Brother Tong was relying on it. After that, he said that he also wanted to become stronger, and immediately put this pill in his mouth. Zheng Dan did not have time to stop his comrade. When he died, Zheng only said sadly that he had not told him to eat this pill. The student explained to the other two that what he was holding in his hands were powder pills that were eaten by a two, horned beast, which was why he died due to the explosion inside. One of the students said that Brother Tong just put a powder pill on his body and jumped into the mouth of a two-horned beast. Now the same student has decided that he has a better idea. He went out to the two-horned beast, openly declaring that he was going to kill it. The comrades watched these actions, hiding in the bushes. The beast reacted quickly to the player's scream. It opened its mouth wide, making a loud sound. It seemed to the student that this was a great chance, so he swung and threw the pill. It hit right on target, falling on the monster's tongue. The monster closed its mouth. The student, pleased with himself, concluded that there was no point in putting himself in danger because you can make an accurate throw. However, soon the two-horned beast spat out the object, it did not work, and now the enemy was running at the student, attacking him. The boy flew into the air because of the blow, saying out loud what everyone had already noticed without him, the monster just spat out a pill. Zhang Dan called this guy an idiot, because Brother Tong would not climb into the monster's mouth if such a method worked. The student who stayed with Dan suggested that he do exactly what Brother Tong did. Dan agreed, but first decided that they needed to hide the unused pills. The notification of a new murder has arrived. Tong Joyous was in the sect hall, saying that he had killed another one. 
This was immediately followed by two alerts, two new murders, and the progress of the task, 12 out of 100. Tong was surprised by the two murders that followed each other. He decided that it was Shan Wang who was already so strong. However, he noticed that two players appeared in the sect. Something immediately cleared up in his head. The other students also discussed the murders happening very quickly. Some thought that it was all the work of Shan Wang. But how could he become so strong so quickly? Something is clearly wrong here. Tian Ren was in the office of the head of the sect. And Tu Fu was there, who reported that he had taken care of everything. He showed the skins to the master. Tian Ren said that it looked really perfect, a really good job. These skins are a valuable resource for making leather armor, storage bags, and other containers. He also added that Tu Fu and the other disciples who helped him made a great contribution to the development of the sect, so they will deservedly receive their reward at the end of the mission. The students thanked the head. Tu Fu turned to the head, saying that, in his opinion, the students were passing the assigned task too quickly. The two-horned beast is quite large. They do not have time to remove the skin from one, as they are dragged two more. Because of this, the quality of the skin deteriorates. The carcass is left for a long time without removing the skin immediately. Ken Ren concluded that this was very strange. It was amazing that a two-horned beast could be defeated by someone with the realm of the hidden realm. But now they began to kill even faster. The master instructed Tufu to find more students who cannot fight, so that they too skin their skins, because it is not worth wasting material. Tufu obeyed. After that, other students came, who also had already completed what the master had asked for. They laid down and showed him the bones they had brought with them. These were the bones of a two-horned beast. They are very hard and serve as a good material for equipment. Ken Ren also promised to reward these students at the end of the mission. Gu Wang, one of them, thanked the master. Meanwhile, the girl, Xiao Chunyan, called everyone to her, because she had cooked the meat of the two-horned beast, now everyone had to try it. This did not go unnoticed by the man who stood behind the girl. This man, Zhang Ren, drooled and said that it smelled so delicious that he really wanted to try a piece. However, Gu Wang informed Zhang Ren that the head wanted to see him. Zhang Ren was a little saddened by this news. Ken Ren was drinking tea in his office when someone came to him. It was a frustrated Zhang Ren, asking if the head was looking for him. Ken Ren did not understand what was wrong with this man and why he looked like he had lost his soul. He can still work, right? The master replied that he had indeed called him and then invited him to look at the raw materials and asked what things he could make from what was available here. Giant Ren looked at the bones and skins. He answered by starting a list, spears, swords, daggers, bone whips, shields and armor, all of which he could make from the available raw materials. According to him, a total of 10 pieces of equipment and several backpacks can be made. Ken Ren chuckled as he noticed how quickly the man's mood had changed. Someone shouted an angry curse behind the wall, and a man was indignant, asking who it was. Outside the sect hall, already at the foot of the mountain, Tong was bursting with anger, asking who had robbed him. A student approached Tong and asked him what had happened. An alert came from the system, four more new murders, total task progress, 18 out of 100. It seemed incredible. However, Tong already understood what was going on. He poured curses on the unfortunate thief. The same student asked Brother Tong again what had happened. Zheng Dan, standing in the crowd, adjusted his glasses and chuckled contentedly, thereby attracting the attention of some players. He began to speak, turning to Brother Tong, said that he had learned how to kill monsters in his way, and this way was much better than to Shan Wang. Tong asked with displeasure, does Dan think he has learned? This kid is just a thief. Dan just doesn't say that, because the resources belong to each of them. An uproar began to rise among the students. They did not understand what was happening, but it began to dawn on them that these two horned beasts had been killed by Brother Tom. However, the method remained unknown. Zhang Dan also said that he would tell everyone the truth if the students wanted it. After that, it became known to everyone that Tong hid powder bullets on his body and so rushed into the mouth of the monster. The students began to discuss what they had heard. Brother Tong was called reckless. Someone thought that his way was too strange, and someone on the contrary said that it was genius. However, the disciples decided to move, because they knew that in any case they would rise again. Now they must arrange a human bombardment of the monsters. The entire crowd of players rushed to get the pills. Someone thanked Brother Tong for this discovery, but he only tried hopelessly to appeal to the guys. Almost everyone ran away, and Brother Tong was very angry. He turned to Dan and started shouting at him, because this idiot told everyone, despite the fact that all the powder pills would be immediately sorted out, how was he going to use this method himself, since everyone knows about it now? Zheng Dan said that Tong was absolutely right, but also added that he did not need these pills. Tong asked what the joke was then. Looking at Tong with a determined and cunning look, Dan said that he had come up with a more effective way, which is why he was ready to sacrifice these pills. And this method consists in the fact that, in the hall of the sect, Shan Wang was reborn again. He was distracted again by the alert when four murders occurred in a row. 
He was lying on the floor and now he hit it with his fist, already on the street. He said that he thought he was the strongest here, and did not know that there are many masters stronger than him here. Now he felt he had to work even harder. Suddenly, he saw two students nearby. They were talking too loudly. One shouted that he just needed to make a show. Dan said that there was only one truth. The show-off frog will always touch your stomach. Dan reported that he always enjoyed shocked looks. This sense of superiority for him is the pinnacle of intellectual ostentation. Tong looked at this guy carefully, thinking that he was a little strange, but acknowledging that his words still made some sense. The demon flutist thought that Shan Wang was using the game for training, and Zhang Dan was just enjoying it, showing off clearly figured in his philosophy. Shan Wang appeared behind Tong, patted him on the shoulder and asked what was going on. Dan smiled, saying that here was another person who did not know the whole truth. Tong turned around, telling the show off to explain everything to him himself. The guy himself decided to go and see how many powder pills were left. Shan Wang remained silent, only following Tong with his eyes. In the next scene, Shan Wang was already walking down the stairs. His face seemed serious as he digested all the information he had received. Powder pills, and everyone copes one on one. That's what they were doing while he was trying to fight monsters. He remembered the words of Dan, who said that unlike other games, battles would no longer be the basis in this one. It made him frown. Do they really think that strength is not the most important thing? Shan Wang intended to prove to everyone that this was not the case. He intended to prove that the truth was valid. But while he was descending, another alert came from the system. Then the second one, and then a few more. He stopped, startled. The guy concluded that this was a slippery slope, because in this way the guys would not last long. In his opinion, everything still depended on him. Two more alerts have arrived. Shan Wang said that it was useless anyway, because they had a limited number of powder pills. After that, two more alerts followed. Once again, Shan Wang stood and convinced himself that the pills would run out very soon. However, the notifications still did not stop. The progress of the task was already 29 out of 100. The young man clutched his head. How can he fight if he constantly hears this sound? Very soon, progress reached the 99th kill. The sound of the alerts has stopped. Shan Wang froze, realizing that nothing else was happening. He ran down the stairs, thinking that the guys had run out of pills, which was undoubtedly pleasing, because Shan Wang decided that the last murder would be his. He quickly found the two-horned monster, thinking that perhaps with this kill he would be able to score the most kills and then receive additional bonuses. He looked at the monster, thinking that he would become number one if he killed it. The student was still going to prove to everyone that strength is above all in this game. However, he suddenly saw something that caught his attention. In the monster's mouth was Brother Tong, who had already been chewed up. It was bad, because the last murder was taken away from Van. The monster ate Tong's brother, followed by a belch. There was no explosion, the monster was still alive. Shan Wang decided that the pill method did not work this time. He was glad that this stupid weapon did not kill the monster, which was to be expected, because the crooked path would not succeed. Shan Wang shouted, calling the monster to him, saying that his opponent was here and that he, Shan Wang, would defeat him in a worthy way. The two-horned monster was running towards the enemy. The cheerful Shan Wang was just waiting for this, but suddenly blood gushed out of the monster's mouth. The pill worked, and the two-horned beast collapsed to the ground right in front of Shan Wang. A notification followed that the progress of the task was 100 out of 100. The task was completed successfully. Shan Wang drooped completely, his face instantly darkened. Near the sect, Xiao Chunyan was cooking a huge two-horned monster on a bonfire. Shan Wang was walking back from the battlefield, drooping and upset. He was walking, looking down. When he came up, Xiao Chunyang was shouting at the top of her voice that the barbecue was ready. He looked at what was happening with a sad expression on his face. The guys celebrated the perfect completion of the mission. They swooped down on the food, devoured the meat, offering a drink to Xiao Chunyan, who cooked such a yummy meal. Someone in the crowd also drank to Brother Tong, because without his sacrifice they would not have been able to win. He just giggled in embarrassment. Shun Wang looked at the players hopefully for a moment, but eventually became sad again. He turned around to leave. However, one of the students noticed him, shouting his name. Shan Wang froze for a moment, then clenched his fists tightly and clenched his teeth, thinking that the guys could say whatever they wanted. The students began to raise their glasses to drink three times to the strongest player, Shan Wang. He immediately turned in their direction. The guys looked at him, smiling, and said that if it hadn't been for him, who killed the first two-horned beast, they might have already left this game. They said that it was amazing, it made their blood boil. Shan Wang was the best for them. Xin Hua waved at Shan Wang, inviting him to sit down, because he had already been poured. Joy appeared on Shan Wang's face again. He turned to the guys in his mind, his eyes shone. This disciple immediately rushed to everyone else. In the next scene, steam was coming from the hot drink. Ken Ren was sitting in his office with his eyes closed. He was thinking that all this had happened in less than one day. 
He already knew that the guys were using powder pills to achieve their goal. Already on the street, one of the students exclaimed that the master was right here. Ken Ren appeared before the disciples of the sect. Tong, who thought that Brother Ren had come to the barbecue, reported that Sayo Chunyong was an excellent cook. The master called Zhang Tong to him, who immediately came over, saying that he was here. The master asked if Tong was really the first person to kill a two-horned beast with powder pills, after which other students followed his example. Brother Tong thought it was bad, because it seemed to him that the master wanted to punish him. Tong immediately became agitated, deciding that the master wanted to punish him for using powder pills in the fight against two horned monsters. He hoped that the NPC wasn't going to delete his account, because he didn't want to leave this game like that. Xin Hua turned to the head, asking if he thought Brother Tong's tactics were inappropriate. Shan Wang also stood up for his friend, saying that regardless of whether a black cat or a white one, a good cat is one that can catch a mouse. Tong looked at his brothers with tears in his eyes, who were now protecting him. Ken Ren looked at the students questioningly, and then asked who said and what made them think that he was going to punish Tong. These words of his caused surprise to all three of them. The master turned to Zhang Tong again, saying that he had plucked up the courage to try new methods and eventually completed the task brilliantly. In total, he killed ten two-horned beasts and contributed the most to the killings. Therefore, the master awarded Tong ten points and one inner pill. The points you receive can be used as currency in the sect. Tong beamed with happiness. He happily thanked the head and said that he would work even harder. It turned out that they wanted to reward him, not punish him. Shan Wang thought that Brother Tong's method was indeed very effective, although not very correct. The master also made a small remark. The powder pill method cannot be used all the time. He thought to himself that the pill would eventually run out. Shan Wang was pleased, deciding that, apparently, the one-on-one -on -one battle was still relevant. Now, Ken Ren turned to Shan Wang, who immediately responded. The master said that this disciple had killed five two-horned beasts, including the very first one, and had also trained other disciples, so his reward would be an inner pill and six points. The student thanked the head and promised to keep trying. In addition, Ken Ren reported that Tufu, Gu Wang and Zhang Ren have made high-quality equipment for the sect, so each of them receives an inner pill. All three thanked the head. For some students, it became a discovery that there is also a reward for making equipment. Xin Hua sat silently at the table, leaning on one hand, and sighed heavily. He looked rather sad. The master announced that all the listed awards will be officially given out tomorrow, and new techniques will be delivered to the Hall of Techniques. He also said that the inner pill is used to improve cultivation, and contribution points are used to exchange items and so on. If the students continued to get the skin of the two-horned beast, the number of points would increase, so the master advised them to work hard to become even stronger. As he was leaving, Ken Ren turned around and called Xin Hua to come with him. He was no less surprised than the other students. Both came to the clan's office. Xin Hua did not hesitate and immediately asked why the head needed him. The master said that although the young man was not awarded the inner pill this time, it was very clear to everyone that his fighting abilities were extremely outstanding. Ken Ren handed the disciple a scroll, saying that the sect was giving him a task. The master told him to look at the scroll, which the student did, concluding that there was a map drawn there. The weather was good again, sunny, warm, birds soaring in the sky. The disciple was holding an inner pill in his hand. He said that she looked very strange, and thought that she would be disgusting to eat. At this time, behind Tong's back, Shan Wang had already brought the pill to his mouth, intending to eat it. When he swallowed the pill, everyone stared at him to see what would happen to him after that. A red aura rejoiced around Shan Wang. He stood with his eyes closed and clenched fists and seemed very tense and then abruptly opened his eyes. Everyone started asking if he felt any changes. Looking at his hands, Wang said he felt like he was stronger than before. He also now had access to view personal information. He was looking at the window that popped up next to him, which contained all his basic information. He noticed that in the cultivation column he had indicated peak of the hidden Yuan kingdom. He had already reached this level while someone was only at the initial stage. One of the disciples said that the realms are usually divided into the initial, middle, late and peak stages. This means that Shan Wang has risen three levels. Someone said that it's only three levels, there's nothing in it that they can't overcome. Another called him an idiot, explaining that in the world of immortals it is difficult to advance even to the first level in the realm. It usually takes at least a year to practice to raise at least the first level, not to mention that it becomes more difficult every time. So, Shan Wang has made a big step forward. Shan Wang was about to leave when he was called out and asked where he had gone. He replied that he was going to go and kill the two-horned monster, because only in this way can you find out how much he really became stronger. Shan Wang has already begun to be considered a battle madman. Among the students, someone began to wonder what the price of the inner pill was. One of the players approached Tungu, asking if he wanted to sell an internal pill that would be paid for with real money. 
Tu Fu, Gu Wang, and Zhang Ren also began to be asked about the sale of internal pills. Tong did not agree to sell the inner pill because he was going to use it himself. But Tu Fu, Gu Wang and Zhang Ren decided to sell their own because they did not like fighting anyway. The auction has started. Someone offered 100, someone 200, then the rate rose to 400, and then to 500. As a result, there was a person who offered 1,000. That person turned out to be Zhang Dan. Someone asked him why he was giving such money for an item to be improved at an early stage. The young man replied that the rich have their own quirks. Now he was talking to three students who were going to sell pills. He said that he only needed one pill, so the rest of the students should figure it out for themselves. Some students suddenly raised the bid to 2,000. Dan turned around to see who was depriving him of his superiority. It was Zin Hua. He added that he would take all three pills. Dan began to get indignant, asking why he needed so many internal pills. Zin Hua just spread his hands, saying that the rich have their own quirks. Besides, he didn't say that he was going to use all three pills alone. Zin Hua started saying that in that case, these three inner pills. Dan said that this guy is a damn rich man, so it seems that no one else is bidding against him. Tong raised his hand, asking everyone to wait. Dan was in shock. Not knowing what to expect from this man, Zin Hua became agitated, thinking that Brother Tong was constantly doing some strange things. The young man decided that if Tong raised the price to 3,000, then he would have to raise it to 4,000 to get the pills. Zin Hua held up his index finger, raising the bid to 3,000. The pills should belong to him. Tong and Dan stood in shock. Zin Hua noticed that Brother Tong seemed stunned, because he did not expect the price to rise again. The young man was determined to win this auction, scratching his neck. Brother Tong said that he actually did not want to buy pills, on the contrary. He wanted to sell his own, but since Zin Hua is ready to give as much as 3,000 for them, it is worth thanking him for it. Tong said that Zin Hua is really good. Zin Hua only looked at Brother Tong questioningly. The student who had previously wanted to buy a pill from Tong said that he had not previously intended to sell it. Tong explained, he just decided that they wouldn't give much for it, so he didn't want to sell, and when he found out that they were offering more than 100 for the pill, he just didn't have time to intervene. But now Tong sold it for 3,000, which he was incredibly pleased with, he thanked Zin Hua again. The other students started saying that this young man was very generous. Zin Hua smiled nervously, thinking that his reputation as a strategist had been destroyed in this game. In the sex office, a cultivator held an inner pill in his hands. Ken Ren said out loud that the task of killing a hundred two-horned beasts was completed. He repeated it several times. One hundred two-horned beasts? The master looked at the pill and laughed. At some point his laughter, coupled with his facial expression, began to seem creepy. Ken Ren sat thinking and decided that he was a little distracted. There were a large number of internal pills in front of him. One hundred inner pills were extracted from a hundred two-horned beasts, but he only gave five as a reward. It was a very good deal. The rest of the students can only receive points, but as long as they increase the number of points consumed, they will still actively complete tasks. According to Kin Ren, any capitalist would cry from what he saw. Right now, the head of the sect was at the peak of the Dongaming realm. If he took 50 inner pills at once, he would be able to break through the realm and reach the Yanguan realm. However, he decided to put these pills aside for a while. He touched them and they disappeared. He was looking at his hand. One of the fingers was wearing a ring that had been hit by pills. He stared at him in silence, lost in his memories. Once upon a time, you returned to him, saying that she had a gift for him. She was hiding something in her hands. And then she held out her palms, showing the ring. Ken Ren then said that it was a priceless storage ring. He asked if the girl really wanted to give it to him. She turned away resentfully, saying that he would not receive it if he did not want it. But the young man hurried to convince her. He would take it. He would take it. He accepted this gift. The girl agreed, and then said that she was returning to the Ice Palace, so soon, because she'd be in trouble if anyone found out she'd snuck out. Ken Ren put the girl's gift on his finger. Right now, he was thinking that his sect should become stronger as soon as possible. Only then would he have the strength to fight the Ice Palace. Outside the sect hall, someone was shouting indignantly that this was too much. The students found out that it takes one point to study the technique, and it lasts for an hour. The question arose whether the score would be wasted if the student failed to learn the technique. Moreover, there were also those who did not kill two horned beasts. These people do not have points at all. Tong asked the students to pay attention to the fact that points can be traded. One student yelled at him, saying that they didn't need it, because in the end, Tong would still sell them to a rich man who would offer a lot of money, and the others would end up getting nothing. He added that the damn merchants and the damn rich are spoiling the whole game. Zin Hua, approaching Tong and putting his hand on his shoulder, said that he had already bought five points from him for 50 yuan, after which he planned to send them to those brothers in the group who did not have points. Everyone started praising Zin Hua, the leader of the group and everyone's hero. 
Someone asked the students to pay attention to the fact that melee fighters should first learn the turtle shell technique. These words were heard. The students understood everything and took it into account. Tong watched what was happening. Now so many people are going to the technician's hall. Tong entered the technician's room and found himself alone in the room. Kin Ren probably optimized the system. Tong now closed his eyes and was ready to start practicing. Glowing silhouettes appeared in front of him, standing in certain poses. It was a turtle shell technique. There was another student standing in front of the hall of technicians, who was choosing a technique to practice. He did not want to study the protective technique of the turtle shell. He thought about the recovery technique that it was some kind of healing skill. It also did not suit him. The fast movement technique seemed to him a good option, but he could not believe that it was worth as much as five points. The ice technique followed. Haramaru looked at it enthusiastically, deciding that it was a skill specially created for him. He liked the ice technique the most, and as a result, his choice fell on it. In the next scene on the street, someone was counting. 47, 48, 49, 50. The student reported to the leader that all team members had completed their training and gathered. Xin Hua said it was great. He led his team resolutely. They were moving in a crowd, but suddenly stopped. The students stared ahead, stunned. Shan Wang was sitting on the many corpses of two horned beasts. Xin Hu asked if he had killed all these monsters. Shan Wang replied that he had killed 25 of them. After that, he jumped to the ground, saying that he was tired and would go to the sec to rest. He really didn't look good, he seemed tired and battered. When he left, he told the guys to show what teamwork is. Xin Hua told Wang to go rest, and when he came down, he would not surprise the two horned beasts here for a long time. Xin Hu also said that there was an update in the Hall of Techniques, so Wang should not forget the new techniques. Since he managed to get so many points, one of the students asked why the leader told Shan Wang about this, because they would not be able to catch up with him that way. But Xin Hu replied that it was all nonsense. They were all like brothers in the same clan. Shan Wang was already approaching the technician's hall. He concluded that it was not worth overexerting himself, because after killing 25 two-horned beasts, he felt so exhausted that he barely climbed the stairs. Harimaru passed by Wang, and Shan turned in his direction, surprised. Was it possible to set such a low height in the game? Meanwhile, the fight against the two-horned was in full swing. The defeated monster fell to the ground. It turned out again. It was already the fifth beast killed by the Zin Hua team. For this, the students thanked Xin Hua, who advised them to first learn the turtle shell technique, because it is much better to fight longer, rather than die in a few seconds. The leader was absolutely right. Now the team has started searching for other animals in the area. Xin Hua thought that it seemed that the first step in the head's mission to control the surrounding resources had been completed. Another beast was found very quickly, already standing near the beast. Xin Hua wondered how such a thing was possible. The monster was shrouded in ice from all sides. It definitely wasn't Shan Wang's work. Then who could have done it? Some student remembered that there was some kind of ice technique in the Hall of Techniques. It turns out that there is another strong student. Xin Hua thought that he didn't have many points, so for safety reasons he mastered the turtle shell technique. But it seems that other skills also seem to be very useful. The intelligence group sent someone back. The student informed the leader that a mine had been found. Xin Hua told everyone who received points to go back and study the ice technique. After forming a ranged group, the rest had to go with the leader to take a point with resources. It was very dark in the mine. Several people have already gone inside. One asked if they could enter the cave without waiting for word from the leader. Another replied that it did not matter, because the leader did not forbid entering the cave, and they were only conducting reconnaissance for the team. The three walked forward, further and further away. They would not see anything at all if they continued to move deeper. The player who was ahead of everyone said that there was nothing to be afraid of, because this is a great opportunity to achieve success, so they should be bolder. The two stood and looked at the friend's back. He disappeared into the darkness, after which a loud scream was heard. The two guys panicked and started asking what happened. 